section 6.1 operations with functions. So here we have two functions, f and g, and we're going to perform the four main operations, addition, subtraction, multiplication, division. Let's start with addition. We want to take function f, add function g. Here it's written in function notation, f plus g of x. One thing to note, we're not multiplying this x in with these functions. It's just noting that these are both functions. Just like up here, f of x is a function, g of x is a function. Here we have f plus g of x. All right, so we take our first function, which is x squared minus 1, and then we're adding in function g, 3x plus 2. We want to add together any like terms. Constants are like, like terms, so we would get x squared plus 3x plus 1. Subtracting, same idea. Take the function f, subtract function g, combine any like terms we can, x squared minus 3x minus 3. Multiplying. In this case, we're just going to FOIL these two out. Okay, we would look to combine any like terms, but we don't have any, so it just stays like that. And lastly, for division, put one on top of the other, see if there's anything that we can simplify, which there's not. So this is our answer. So one thing that you're often going to be asked with these types of questions is what are the domain and range of the functions? Domain is the set of all inputs, or in other words, what are we allowed to plug in for the x? and range is the set of all outputs, or in other words, what values will we get for y when we plug in those values for x's. Now, in most of these cases, domain is all real numbers, okay? The things that restrict the domain are things like fractions and square roots. For example, in this very bottom uh, function operation, the f divided by g, we end up with a fraction. And the thing that restricts the domain in this one is that we can't have a zero in the denominator. It's not allowed. We're not allowed to divide by zero. So the domain would be whatever x equals when that denominator equals zero, right? So we take the denominator, we set it not equal to zero, and we solve it out. And when we do that, we would get x is not equal to two. Uh, negative two-thirds. Everything else is okay to plug in, but when we plug in negative two-thirds for x, the denominator would equal zero, and that would give us an undefined error because we're not allowed to divide by zero. Along those same lines, let's say we have the function h of x, which is radical 5x minus 10, and function g of x, which is x squared minus 25. It's asking us to find the domain of each. Okay, we'll start with h of x. Radical 5x minus 10. Now, we're not allowed to take the square root of a negative. Okay? We've learned how to do it, but it's not a real number. When we're talking about domain, we're talking about answers that would give us real numbers. So we would say that this square root has to have something that's greater than or equal to 0 underneath it. Because once we go below 0, we're square rooting a negative. We're going to get imaginary numbers. That's going to restrict our domain. We're going to solve this inequality. Okay, add 10, divide by 5, and we get a domain of x is greater than or equal to 2. Okay, if we looked at 1 over g of x, let's write it out, 1 over x squared minus 25. So here we have a fraction. The denominator of this fraction can't equal 0. So what would make the denominator of that fraction equal 0? Well, let's say we factored this. And we made it x plus 5, x minus 5, since this is different difference of squares. So if x was 5 or negative 5, the denominator would be 0. That's not allowed. So the domain is x is not equal to 5 or negative 5. Everything else is OK to plug in for x. One last thing to cover is you're going to be asked to evaluate functions at certain values. So here we have two nested functions. We always want to start from the inside and move to the outside. So for g of h of 7, this one on the top, we want to start with the innermost function, h of 7. We're using function h, and whatever's inside our parentheses is going to get plugged in for the x. So we're going to plug in a 7 for that x there. So 5 times 7 minus 10. Evaluate that. We have the square root of 25, so we end up getting 25. Now this was function h from up here, but notice I kept this g on the outside. I'm just carrying that down. So this all equals 5, okay? And once we get that 5, that's going to go inside function g. So now that we have this evaluated, we take whatever we got, and we're plugging it into the x up here. 
5 squared minus 25, we get 0 as our answer. Right on the bottom one, we're just going to flip the two function orders. So we're going to start on the inside and we're going to do g of 7 first. Okay, so we start off by plugging 7 into that g function. 7 squared minus 25, we get 24. Okay, now that's going to get plugged into the h function. So that's going up here, getting plugged into that x. 5 times 24 minus 10 gives us radical 110. We would try to do a factor tree on this. We would be unsuccessful. We can't break that down uh, any more than it already is.